Construction Coach here. Today I will show you a couple metal roofs I've installed. The first is this 36 inch rib steel panel roof, then a quick look at a 12 inch standing seam roof on some beautiful timber buildings. These are the flashings I will be using from left to right, J trim, ridge cap, fascia, and gable trim. Starting on the bottom edge, install drip edge flashing under membrane or paper. Using inch and a quarter galvanized roofing nails every 12 to 16 inches. When lapping flashings, make sure to have a minimum of 4 to 6 inches of lap. Starting with the first sheet, line up with the gable end making sure the bottom is overhanging past the drip edge by an inch and a quarter. Hold piece with two screws and check with the tape measure that the panel is square and parallel to the other gable end. Now I will fit the gable end trim over the end rib and fasten with one inch hex screws with neoprene washers. The rest of the panel should go in easy. If everything is square and parallel, to keep all the screw lines straight, I will mark out a screw layout on the pile of sheets and drill a 8 inch hole through the pile. Then when installing the neoprene washer screws, I have to fill the pilot hole and that should keep the screw line super straight. I will cut the last piece when I'm finished the other side. From the ladder, I'm screwing off the end of the sheets. I will start the other side soon. Rather than starting on the end, I will line up with the last rib and work back. I have had an experience where I started at the end and the sheets gained a three quarter inch and just missed lining up. It wasn't a big deal because you couldn't see it from the ground only when you were on the roof. This was a low slope roof, but the metal is super slippery. I, re I recommend a rubber sole shoe and a harness with a tie off. If the eave is higher than eight feet. Here is the final look of the fully screwed off roof. Gable trims installed, time to fit in the foam closures and ridge cap flashing. I like to chalk a line on each side of the ridge so I can keep my foam closures and ridge cap flashing straight. I will cut each piece between the ribs. Some installers like to wrap and go over the rib and squish into it when installing the cap. The supervisor I was working for wanted it this way. With all the closures installed, I will fit the cap on with four screws. Then install the next section with four screws. Check that it is all on the line and then drill an eighth inch pilot hole into each rib. Finishing with a neoprene screw in each hole. Those closures keep insects, birds, and splashing water from getting up there. What a nice job site to work in. Nestled in the Rocky Mountains on a beautiful 18-hole golf course. All finished up here. Time to jump down and start the soften and fascia. This is a 16-foot by 16-foot pump shack building to pressure water for the golf course irrigation system. a quick look at another metal roof I've finished. This is a 12 inch standing seam roof. I'm going to literally prep it the same way with my paper and flashings and start on the one end making sure it's square and parallel. Then I'll install some screws down a screw channel 
that they have on the right side of the sheets. Then when I go to put the next sheet on top, it will click over the screw channel or the standing seam, the rib, and hide the screws. So then I'm able just to keep on shedding over top with the next layer and fastening it down, concealing the screws all the way through. This roof was a little bit steep for me to work on, so I picked up this lift for the weekend and it sure helped me get it done fast. If you're interested in the full standing seam roof, there is going to be a video in the roofing playlist that shows these two large timber buildings getting their full roofing material installed. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the install, just leave a comment and I will try to get back to you.